This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Radio noise that could almost lull an exhausted man to rest. Send a supervisor over for these pediatric DOAs. John Treadgold's body snapped. He shot for the dial and spun up the radio's volume. Are my ears playing tricks on me? He hadn't heard any calls about DOAs, but there was a follow-up report tweetering on a back channel, meaning an ambulance driver had called to say he was in service or had something important. Treadgold heard the unit's number, which told him the unit was on the east side of Houston. He phoned his station, the local NBC affiliate, and asked the assignment desk editor to look up the call on the computer. The time was approximately 10 a.m. on Wednesday, June 20th, 2001. It's a respiratory problem, unconscious, the editor reported. But later on they put on a note that says possible children. She gave Treadgold the intersection that marked the call's location. Treadgold thought about where he was, downtown Houston. He thought about where that intersection was, Clear Lake, 20 to 30 minutes away on the outer edges of Houston, not far from where there had been more major flooding and loss of homes during Tropical Storm Allison. Well, it's a weird call, he replied. They said DOA. His editor called the fire station. Do you have a DOA? We've looked at our computer and there's no DOA listed. Well, they may have meant GOA, Treadgold said, as he still listened carefully to the ten radios, hoping for an explanation of gone on arrival. No one had waited for the ambulance to arrive. Well, there's nothing else going on. I'm going to go ahead and go down there and see what's happening. He drove to Clear Lake arrived at the intersection that had been earmarked by the station's computer check, and saw nothing. He studied the neighborhood, a quiet, comfortable, middle-class community with mostly well-maintained yards. Men jogged down the sidewalks. Neighbors washed flood mud from their driveways. He reached for the radio, ready to report that there was no story, when he edged around a corner and spotted cop cars and ambulances. He cruised closer and saw a police officer, two paramedics, and a tall, thin man with closely cropped dark hair, wearing a long-sleeved white shirt. John Treadgold knew from the looks on their faces that Wednesday, June 20th, 2001, wasn't going to be a slow news day after all. He drove past the house, around the block, and returned. Two police supervisors and one paramedic supervisor stood outside the house. Treadgold parked his vehicle and got out. Immediately, a police sergeant walked over to him. We're not going to make any statements, the sergeant said. The medical examiner's been called. Homicide's been called. They'll talk to you. I heard the call was about children. Treadgold looked into the sergeant's face. It quivered. I'll tell you that it's children and there's a multiple amount, and we'd appreciate it if you don't come in the yard. He added that any further information would have to be provided by a Houston Police Department media or homicide spokesperson. John Treadgold called KPRC. It's 99% confirmed that there's at least two children dead here. There's nobody else here, he continued, and began to set up his camera equipment across the street from the house. As he did, a man and a woman approached him. What's the deal? they asked. He replied that he wasn't sure. That man in the white shirt, his name is Rusty Yates, the woman said. He just came home from work and went running over to the house. Treadgold aimed his camera at the house and Yates, still standing outside his forehead pressed against the brick wall as a gray-haired woman gently rubbed his back. Do you know this family? he asked. Yeah, he brought all of his kids over last week for my boy's birthday. At least one of those kids is not alive anymore, Treadgold thought. What about his wife? Yates tried to peer through a window as a police officer stood blocking the front door. She didn't come. She hardly ever comes out. He brings the kids out. The cameraman nodded as he wondered why Rusty Yates was standing outside. But does she live there? Oh, yes, she lives there. You see her in the yard, but she hardly ever leaves the yard. What's her name? The neighbor didn't know. Teams of homicide investigators drove up and got out of their vehicles. I don't remember the last time I saw three teams of homicide officers come to a story, Treadgold thought. What are all these detectives? I believe somebody is dead in the house, Treadgold answered. Oh, replied the neighbor. I hope it's not one of the kids. Inside the house, the woman with the long, dark, wet hair sat on her love seat, her hands calmly folded over her lap. 
HPD officer Frank Stumpo looked at her. She looked at him, then looked away. Rusty Yates moved to the back.